Hello guys, I'm going to share with you how to use the present simple tense, okay? As you notice, it said simple, so it should be the easiest um, grammatical structure to use in English, okay? So, um, let's get into this. Why do we use the present tense? I've heard many people say that the present tense is used to talk about something that you're doing in the moment, activities in the present, and so forth. But we have to be careful because the present tense is not to talk about an activity that we're doing right now or in the moment. In that case, we would have to use the present continuous. So I'm going to give you a list of um, situations when we can use the present simple tense. The first one, when we're talking about facts, things that are true, it could be about you, about your career, your family, another person, your job, etc. So, for facts, we use the present tense. For example, the earth is round. So, if you notice here, we're using the verb to be in its simple form, is, in third person. The earth is round. The sky is blue. I sleep a lot. I speak Spanish. These things are true. They are facts in general or about yourself, okay? So this would be the first um, reason why we'll, we'll choose to use the present simple tense. The second reason is to talk about likes and dislikes, okay? So if you want to talk about the activities that you prefer to do, then you use the simple present tense or the things that you don't like to do. Here I have some examples. If you can notice on the left um, side, I have likes. For example, I like ice cream. I love soccer. I'm fond of action movies. She prefers to dance also, depending on the subject that you're using. Um, you would have to um, conjugate the verb correctly. We're not going to get into the conjugations as yet because that will be for a little bit later on. But I just want you to notice we have positive sentences. And then on the other side, since we're talking about dislikes, these are things that we, uh, we don't like, obviously, so they would have to be in a negative form. So the first example, I'm using the same um, positive um, structures and just putting them in the negative form for them to become dislikes, okay? So here you can notice, I don't like ice cream, I hate soccer, I'm not fond of action movies, she doesn't prefer to dance. I think here it changed, um, it, it got mixed up there, but it should be prefer, okay? So remember, for facts, now we have likes and dislikes. The other reason why we use the present tense is to talk about routine, things that you do on a daily basis. Remember, it's not something that is happening in the moment, but it talks about daily activities, especially if you would like to tell a person um, what you do during the day. So you would use this structure, okay? So I wash my hair daily. If you notice the word wash, is just in the present simple form. She brushes her hair often. She watches movies all day. Routine, things that you do on a daily basis, maybe at a specific time during the day or so forth, okay? And to give general information, like when you're presenting yourself, you give general information about who you are. So you'll start by what's your name, what did you study, where you work, if you're a mom, if you're married, etc. So here I put some examples about my life in the simple um, present um, form. Okay, how do we um, how do we form the present simple tense? Okay. We're going to um, divide them into three parts. This is how I prefer to, to teach my classes. So I divide them in, in, in divide the structures in affirmative. Then we're going to see the negative and then we're going to see the interrogative. So let's start with the affirmative. Remember that in English we have different um, verb endings. Okay, so depending on how the verb ends, that's how we would have to conjugate them. And remember, in English, we only notice or we only see the verb um, changing only in third person. Let's get into it so you know what I mean. 
for example, consonants, okay? This word ends in T. So if the word ends in T, then it's a consonant. If you notice the first person, I, the verb remains the same. You, the verb is the same, but for the third person right here, we have to add an S. So whenever the verb ends in, in a consonant, you automatically have to add an S. Then we have we, which is plural, so there's no S and they. So if you notice, um, the present tense is really simple because the verb only changes in the third person. So once you know a word or once you know a verb, sorry, then you know how to use it. The only time it's going to change is when it's in the third person. So that's for consonants. So all we do is add an S. If the verb ends in Y, then remember in English, the same applies. For first person, it remains the same. We do nothing to the verb. The verb remains in its normal structure. However, when it's in third person, he, she, or it, then we have to change the Y to I, as you can see right here, and then we add ES. But if you go on, you notice that the other verbs, like with we, they, it remains the same. So the verb doesn't change it. It only changes in the third person. And another um, rule for the, for the affirmative is when the word ends in CH or SH. Verbs ending in CH and SH, all we do is add ES to the third person. Obviously, if it's in the first person, the second person, the verb remains the same. If it's the first person plural or second person plural, the verb remains the same. It only changes when it's in the third person, okay? So, and that's it for, for affirmative structures. All you have to remember, if it's a consonant, we add an S in third person. But for all the other subjects, that be you, um, I, we, they, it remains the same. If it ends in Y, then we have to change the Y to I and then add ES. Also, if it ends in CH or SH, we only change the verb in the third person to add ES. Now, let's go over to the negative structure. I'm using the same um, sentences from the, the affirmative one, just so you know how they change in the negative form. And remember in English, for a word, a sentence, or a structure to be negative, all we have to do is to add not, okay? So for the consonants, all we're doing here is using not, but since we're going to make the sentence a negative sentence, then we need to use an auxiliary. So in this case, we have do, okay? So do not. And if you notice, we're doing nothing to the verb. The verb remains the same. The verb should never change. What we will change, though, is the auxiliary verb that we're using here. In this case, it's always do. So, in negative form, I do not, or the contraction, don't eat. You don't eat. But here, in third person, this is where we have to add ES. Because remember, when the word ends in a vowel, we add ES to the ending, okay? And we get doesn't. We don't, they don't. And the same thing goes on over here. What I want you guys to notice is that even though the word ends in a consonant, Y or CH, we are not changing the verb. What we do have to change here is the auxiliary verb that would be do or doesn't if it applies for third person, okay? So if you compare it to affirmative, negative, you notice the structure is the same. The only thing we're adding is the negative structure with the auxiliary verb do and then we get do not, does not, or you can write it with the contractions as I have here. And the last structure is the interrogative. Okay, this is used to ask questions. And I'm using the same sentences because I think it would be easier for you to follow along. Okay, so the same structure if the verb ends in a consonant, Y or CH, if you notice in this case, we're not changing the verb in any way at all. What we will change, however, 
is the auxiliary verb, which is also do. So if you notice do, we use it for negative and interrogative. If it's affirmative, then we don't need an auxiliary verb, okay? So here, the structure would have to um, go like this. We start with the auxiliary verb, the subject, the principal verb, and then the complement. So here's what I mean. Even though here we have the consonant, but we use do I eat, and then you would complement do I eat chicken. Obviously, we don't normally ask ourselves this question. So it would be like um, a rhetorical question, but just for you to get the structure, I'm putting it there. However, do you eat? Yes, this one is very common. So do you eat? The verb remains the same. But for third person, we have does because it's she or he. And then the word remains the same. I'm emphasizing this part specifically because many students, they say, does she eat? Because they automatically remember that from the affirmative, we add S to the verbs. But remember, once we change to negative or interrogative, then the verb that we have to modify or change according to the subjects would be the auxiliary verb. In this case, do or does if it's for third person. And the same thing applies over here, even if the verb ends in Y, we're not changing the verb in any way. What we do change, however, is the auxiliary verb, okay? CH remains the same, the same, but we use does and the base form of the verb. Do and the base form. Do plus the base form. So if you check them and compare to the interrogative, sorry, to the negative and affirmative, the structures are similar, only in the sense that we're going to change it when we're using an auxiliary verb, um, that be for negative or for interrogative purposes, okay? Don't be afraid to speak in the present tense. It's easy to use and you can avoid mistakes. Actually, I have um, a lot of um, books that are written in the present tense. The present tense is really easy to understand. It helps students to improve and it helps you also to be able to produce more quickly because obviously other tenses are a little bit more complicated and it takes time. But this doesn't limit you to speaking. What I'm trying to say is that once you dominate the present tense, you can actually speak in the present tense. It's quite easy. I'm going to share with you an example of a story written completely in the present tense, okay? It says, the man without a name. What's your name? asked Dr. Cox. The man in the bed did not answer. Open your eyes, said Dr. Cox. The man in the bed opened his eyes. He looked at the doctor. Do you understand the question? asked Dr. Cox. Yes, said the man in the bed. I do. Good, said Dr. Cox again. The doctor smiled at the man. It was a nice smile. And do you know your name? So just to give you a little idea, obviously there are cases when they would have to use the past tense, but if you notice, the majority of the structures are in the simple present form. Okay. So we already checked how to make or how to create the affirmative, negative, and interrogative forms using an auxiliary. But there's this one special verb in English that doesn't need an auxiliary. It operates by itself, and that would be the verb to be. So we're going to check also the structures in affirmative, um, negative, and interrogative form, okay? So here you can see the verb to be. Um, for my listeners or those who will be watching, if your language is Spanish, did I already put the translation here? It would be similar to the verb ser o estar, depending on uh -huh, what you want to say. So in this case, for affirmative, with all the subjects, we have I am. So remember, the first um, conjugation of the verb to be is am. I am tired. You are tired. But here, in third person, she, he, or it is tired. We are tired. They are tired. So the conjugations go like this. I am, you are, 
she is, he is, we are, they are, okay? And then you complement it with whatever information you want. We also have the negative structure the same. All we're doing here is including not. So if you compare it to the affirmative, the only difference we have here is not. And remember, in English, you can choose to write the not completely or you could choose to write the contractions. It's all up to you, okay? And then we have the interrogative. In this case, just as the other verbs with um, the auxiliary verb do, we put do or does at the beginning. Well, in this case, the verb in itself goes at the beginning because remember to be is very independent. It doesn't need an auxiliary verb to operate effectively. So it says, am I tired? Which would be like a rhetorical question. Are you tired? Is he or she tired? Are we tired or are they tired? Okay, so it's similar um, to the other verbs that we saw, but just the only thing that changes here is that we do not need any help from any auxiliary verb. Okay, um, some exercise um, to see if we got the, the, the activity correctly, if we really dominate the present simple. So, Sarah is a girl. It will be third person, so we would have to put Sarah watches with ES because remember this ends in CH, so we add ES at the end. Sarah watches TV all day. This is talking about Sarah's routine. Mike is also third person so because it's he, so we would have to put an S because this verb is, it ends in a consonant, so Mike gets up early mom is also third person so we're gonna put even though here it ends also in a consonant so we're gonna put s mom calls me every day they is plural uh -huh. it's the second person plural so they have here the verb doesn't change at all the verb remains the same so they have dinner at the diner on saturdays talking about routine as well the chef cooks great this is giving general information about something so the chef cooks because it's third person so we just add an s right here great i enjoy netflix enjoy because his first person doesn't change at all okay here we have some um, questions and other um, exercises so do you ride so the verb wouldn't change in this case do you ride the bike because we're using do and we already have our auxiliary we Put the verb in the same form. Remember, the verb doesn't change in the interrogative form. We walk, since it's plural, so the verb remains the same as well. We walk to school daily. Here, since it's third person, we already change the auxiliary verb to does. So, does she know him well? We're is the library around here so where is we have to put the verb in third person because we're talking about the library who has the umbrella we want to know who which is third person so who has the umbrella okay so guys if you notice the present simple tense is really easy all you have to do is to remember the simple rules if it's a consonant you add an s if it's y you have to change your y to i e s and if it ends in ch or sh then you have to add an es this also applies for words ending in vowels like o then you automatically have to add es but remember that the verb only changes when it's in third person for all the other person it remains the same Okay, guys, so thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy this video. Please don't forget to thumbs up if you really liked it. Um, share it with your friends so they can practice as well. And, well, keep practicing and look out for my next video.
ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ